Yo, welcome back everybody to video number 11 on the DSL, the domain specific language defined by Spark SQL, part six, where we are going to look at sort, group, by, and aggregates. Now, until now we have a good understanding how the API is organized. We know how to access columns, how to transform columns, how to select these transformations or columns themselves, and what methods exist to reference columns and now we would like to look at how we can work with multiple rows in a data frame so by now we've been looking at what can we do with one particular row and now we want to look at for example sorts so we want to sort the rows in a data frame in a particular order and we're also looking at grouping functions where we group the rows in a data frame by a particular key and then we can also sort them and apply aggregation functions on top of them. We can find these aggregation functions in the sql.functions object. And there also exists some shorthands which are defined on a grouped data frame or data set. Now here in the code example, we are going to yeah, implement a small assignment where we are going to find the highest closing price per year and then sort them descendingly by these highest um, closing prices. And we're also going to calculate the average of these closing prices in a year. So let's get started. All right, let me switch over to the IDE and open our main.scala file. And here we have, we are loading our data frame and then we are renaming the columns as we did in the previous video videos and I removed the rest but we're keeping the rename so our um, reference to our data frame with the renamed columns is called stock data. Now on the stock data, let me see if we can bring this up. Now on the stock data we can call group by and group by takes a list of columns as you can see from this overlay here. And here we have to reference some columns or we could also use strings, but I would go with the columns and I would use the dollar annotation just for simplicity. It's a little bit easier to type dollar and then the column name, than writing the col function all the time. Now here we want to group by um, the year. So here we need to extract the year from the date. So what I would do is to call the function year, which is defined in the sql.functions object on the column date. And now we have to import this one. I press um, Alt and Enter to follow the IDE suggestions. And it suggests me to import sql.functions.year function so that we extract the year from the date. Now for the uh, uh, dollar annotation, you may recall that we have to import the Spark implicits. So we call import in our current scope and then the Spark session and then implicits and then dot underscore, which basically imports all of the implicits defined in this package or in this object. And now we have a group by year. And usually when we chain many transformations together or API calls together, I just put each one in a particular line or in a single line so that it's readable uh, easier. So here we are grouping by the year, which is extracted from the date. And now we want to aggregate the, all the rows that are ending up in this particular group and um, aggregate them in a particular way. And the first way we want to have is to find the max uh, closing price for each year. So you can imagine having uh, multiple groups, um, each group comprised only of rows containing um, values or rows from a particular year and now we can aggregate them and therefore so if we call group by we can see from the implementation that we are get, getting a relational group data set and on the relational da uh, group data set we can call um, ag which stands for or is a shorthand for aggregation and this function ag and it takes a number of expressions or a yeah, a number of column definitions. And these column definitions can, of course, also be transformations. 
Now what we can, for example, do is call max and then here a column reference of close. And now we have to import this one as well. And here we take the org Apache Spark SQL functions dot max. So what will happen is as we are within an egg method on the relational group data set, we will find the max for all the rows in a particular group. And the second one we wanted to do was uh, functions and then a average AVG and also a column reference also of the close price. So what we get is now only one row per year in our data frame. And that we can also print to the console now. And I will execute this. All right. And once it has completed, we can see in our result we have in the first column the year. And then the max. So here we have only one year. All the rows are basically combined into one row. And in the second column, we get the max price of all of the rows in this group. So in 1990, the highest day with um, a close price of 1.69 and the average close price. So average over all the rows in with year 1990 is 1.34. Now you can see that per default, the column names end up being the expression that we used to create them. So here we have a max of close. Here we have an average of close. Here we have the year extraction of date. But you know already that we also can introduce aliases on columns. So for example, we could easily say here as and then a string as column name as year and this one as um, max close and here as average close. And now our columns would be named appropriately. All right, the next step was to sort our data frame. Now, after the aggregation, you can see from the API documentation that we are getting back a usual data frame. So it's not grouped anymore because we have co collapsed all of the rows for a particular group into one row. Now here we can simply call a sort, which we can call on a usual data frame. And in for the arguments of the sort method, we just can pass in any number of columns as column references. So we will sort by um, max close and this on this column definition, because that's a column reference, we can also call descending. You wouldn't be able to call this on a string. So if we want to pass in descending, so the, the highest value first, you would always have to pass in column references because on columns you can call the descending method. Now let's execute, execute this one again. All right, in our result, we can see first of all that our um, column names are uh, of a better format now. We have specified the explicit column name. And we can see that the year 2020 was actually the year with the day of the highest closing price ever that has been recorded here. And it was of the value 327.2. And in, on average in 2020, the closing price was 293.31. Yeah, and that's basically what I wanted to show you today. So we have seen that we can group a data frame by columns. Then we can apply um, aggregation functions on that group data frame. And we can also sort a data frame. A second thing I wanted to show you was that there are some shorthands for aggregations. For example, I can say stock data and then group by and then our columns again, year of date and then uh, as year and then we can also say directly max and in the max we have to pass in a, uh, the column names so that could be multiple as well so the max close price for example max close and also the max um, high maybe and that we can show as well 
column name, let's see what's wrong here. So it only takes a list of strings. There's, there's no uh, possibility for passing in um, columns here. So we would have to remove the um, dollar annotation here. So we simply pass strings, which, which also means that we cannot assign aliases easily. We would have that we, have, we would have to do that in a dedicated step, but that one should work now as well. We get we first group the data by year and then retrieve the highest close and the highest high price. Let's see. So and here we go on our third result. Let's print it to the console. We can see that we have the year and then the max close and the max high price. So we don't use the egg function on the grouped data frame, but rather we use the max directly. All right, that's it for now and see you in the next video, part 13, where we're going to talk about uh, window functions. Until then, bye-bye.